The global babysitting industry was valued at 22.41 billion in 2022. On the surface, this supply triangle between service agencies, families, and nannies seems rather simple and mutually beneficial, but it's not. So where does it all go wrong? The question is, why would someone like me have such a strong dislike for the idea of having hired help? These are the questions that we're going to answer in this video. We're also going to learn about how to make the best of your nanny situation, if you have any. I think I'm on my 10th help, the 10th one, but by far, the best for me was the first help I had when I had my first child. Now, even before starting a family, I had always had this fear, but that's about to change. But first, who are these people? Like almost every other profession since the dawn of man, it came about to satisfy a need. So, how long have we needed nannies? The word itself was coined in the late 18th century. But before that, nannies had existed from as early as 800 BC. Previously known as wet nurses, their job description and titles have evolved over time. For example, in the 14th century, they were known as nursemaids or simply nurses who took care of children in affluent homes as domestic servants. Fast forward to the 1700s, since women were not allowed to work, well, the nanny occupation became increasingly, or should I say more popular for young unmarried women who wanted some kind of independence away from their own families. So they would work and in return be compensated with food and shelter. Part of the requirement was that nannies had to be educated because often they were the first child's tutor until they got to official school going age. In the 18 and 1900s, that is the Victorian era, nannies were like supervisors of nursemaids and often weren't as hands-on with children. It's kind of like what domestic service agencies do now. They provide a service and they supervise. Not so much has changed with this occupation, but in today's world, it's not only a job for women. There are male nannies, otherwise known as mannies. Tonight, a Lakeland mother is grieving the loss of her infant son. Parents helpless as they watch the screaming ordeal hey, unfold on their phones. I was angry. I was, I was. Hey, they hired the woman through a well-known babysitting service. This was what has shaped my perception about nannies for as long as I can remember. And there's even a subgenre of horror films dedicated to it. Now let's bring it to the now. Why is there an increase in the need for the services of nannies? Raising children in the past was more a communal thing than it is now. The family system used to consist of extended families sharing large homes together. We had what you call the village. However, millennials and the modern family system is shifting more toward the nuclear. Not only that, majority of two-parent homes have both partners working out of home. Now we know why there's an increase in the demand. So where do we find the nannies? What is the thought process and some experiences, if any? So um, it got to a point because I didn't, have a, I didn't have a reliable help. And one, if you don't have reliable help, it takes a toll on you mentally. It takes a toll on you physically. I mean, in every aspect of your life, you wouldn't even get the strength and energy to connect with your partner as you would want to. So we had a sit down discussion and then we said, OK, we are going to get a new help. But what are the lessons that we've learned from the previous ones and what can we do better? So this time round, I started asking around based on recommendations. We got someone. We brought this person in, we had an interview with the person. After that, we had to let her go discuss and find out whether indeed this person can live with us. We took her through a series of medical tests and all, just to be sure that she was uh, me medically okay to live with us. Because sometimes, uh, some of them also have illnesses because they're going to help you take care of your children. You have to be sure that there are no illnesses or ailment or they, they don't have any allergies. So we took her through that. And then after discussing salary and all that, whether she was ready to move uh, from her current place, we settled on her. And it's been good so far, uh, going on three years. I think she's been good. While there is available data and information on the domestic work or service industry in many parts of the world, in Ghana, 
there is not enough, and understandably so. Hiring of domestic workers has been through the informal means predominantly. According to Dr. Joji Chikata's research publication, this is the reason for the lack of accurate statistics on domestic work in Ghana, resulting in Using employment agencies to find the best domestic workers for your home is a fairly new phenomenon. No, I was done with agencies, I think, after my fifth help. Agencies never helped me. So this one was purely recommended by somebody who knew her personally. In fact, employment agencies used to be illegal in Ghana under the 1969 Labour Regulations LI No. 632, Paragraph 61. The two biggest names for employment agencies that have ties to providing domestic workers are Linné Services and Tewembo Company Limited. The industry is still very much largely informal. The bottom line is getting help won't be easy even in countries that have mature markets for such services and regulations governing the practice are not devoid of mishaps. Ooh. <laughs> Just one. So I was in a university at a, the at a time. I had this help. Um, she, she wasn't somebody who lived with me. She would just come and go. I came back from lectures one day and I realized that my daughter had a bump on her forehead. So I asked her, what, why, the, uh, why the bump? What happened? And she said, oh, she was in the kitchen. And she realized that the child was crying, but she thought that's that's how kids are. So she left the baby. And uh, when she came back, she realized that the child had climbed um, the burglar proof in the house, but she was just watching it because kids always like to it. So I said, why didn't you let the child, uh, why didn't you bring the child? And she said, oh, she was just watching her because she was in the kitchen, which was so far from the living room. And I said, what happened? Well, how did she get the bomb? She said, oh, a ball from. I say, watch my baby fall. I say, yeah, because uh, kids, we just have to leave kids to be kids. And I realized that, no, this girl was not going to help me. So immediately I had to let her go. So one can only hope to find the perfect match. And for people like me who had sworn based on hearing all these horror stories in the past, never to use the services of a nanny, need to know that when the time comes, unless, well, you're a single parent making a decision by yourself, it won't be yours alone to make. So how do we go about managing without hoping to find a perfect fit? What can we look out for? What are some of the signs that we can look out for to protect our children? When your once very active and vibrant child is all of a sudden, since the nanny started coming by a tad slow or timid or clingy, this might be something you need to investigate. If your child protests or hates it when a particular nanny comes over, this could be a warning sign you should take very seriously, especially when your child may not be able to articulate their concerns properly. If you're seeing frequent inexplicable scrapes, bumps and scratches here and there on your child when the babysitter is around, well, this could either be a sign of poor supervision or physical abuse from the babysitter, especially when they seem to have excuses for why those injuries happen. When you don't generally get along with your babysitter or they don't seem to follow very simple instructions, or they're tardy or they leave earlier than scheduled, this is something you should not tolerate. Traumatic events manifest differently in children and one of them could be happening subconsciously as nightmares or even bedwetting. If this is a new change you see in your child after introducing a particular nanny, you may want to check it. Can you count on your sitter to respond quickly to text or scheduled communication? If they don't seem professional or courteous, your home is never in order by the time they leave, kids getting sick from ingesting toxic substances, or can be major, major red flags. There's no other way around this for the new millennial home with kids. Be vigilant and succinct in your communication.